Kanaan is a very skilled guy, but these other three guys have been the heart and soul of their team tonight. Look at this guy right here. Williams gets in the iron. Makes me sound like I know what I'm talking about. You just watch guys. Boy, was that ugly. The Grizzlies were missing John Morant, Desmond Bain, Steven Adams, Marcus Smart, and Brandon Clark, and the Raptors got absolutely clobbered over the head by Memphis, losing by eight, but falling down by as much as 19, a slow start, tons of turnovers, a dominant performance from Jaron Jackson Jr., as the Raptors fall 12 games below 500. We didn't, uh, we, did, we were not connected offensively or defensively. Um, everybody's were like, kind of like walking on eggshells and, uh, you know, start of the game, all the turnovers that we had, um, it's a question of focus and uh, it's it's the question of like bringing that effort to, to, the, to the game, you know, so that was lacking for the start of the game. We, we tried to find it that, that uh, you know, grew later in the game, but not enough to, to make a, uh, come back. This was a brutal watch from the start. Just to put things into perspective, at one point in the first quarter, the Raptors had as many turnovers as they did points. Jaron Jackson Jr. racked up five steals just in the first and finished with 27 points, most of which were in the first half. It was clear tonight that despite being undermanned, Memphis had the advantage in one area, at the center spot, with Jakob Pertl out for yet again another game with an ankle injury. He's a game changer, man, of, of course. You know, um, having a seven-footer there changes the whole changes the whole game. It changes the, um, the other team being able to drive and finish and, you know, things like that. Having that rim protector there, also the rebounding, you know, so um, we're missing him, but just got to try to figure it out until he gets back. You know, um, we we have we have guys, we have enough guys to, to win, and we just got to figure out how to do that. In the second half, and especially in the fourth quarter, the Raptors tried to claw their way back into this game, and that's why this game looked so close, but ultimately, they couldn't get enough from anyone outside of Scotty Barnes and RJ Barrett. Scotty finished with 22 points, 12 rebounds, 8 assists, and a career-high 6 blocks. Meanwhile, Barrett put up 29 points and 9 rebounds, but quickly struggled immensely in this one. 3 of 13 for 8 points with another 10 assist night. It ultimately seems like this mishmash roster is still trying to figure each other out and they are not in sync at all on either end of the floor as they've lost seven of their last eight games i mean uh it's, it's just the start it's just a start of the, of the process and uh um good thing over here is that we're gonna have uh three days uh, without games an opportunity to really uh practice and uh you know uh, try to get on on a, you know install offense and defense as much as possible and try to to get guys on the same page as much as possible in short short amount of time you know i i believe in uh talent of this group in uh, and uh uh i believe in our players we just need to be more intentional behind everything you know, we have such a young team so you know when having young teams <coughs> excuse me we're having young teams you have young minds and um those young minds um sometimes can let things creep in but you know, um, with having somebody like me and Gary and, you know, OP on the team, you know, we're able to kind of like, you know, relay those messages from the coaches and, and make sure guys are staying in line with what we want to do as a team. And, you know, um, the good thing is, you know, with having those young minds, they're, they're very, very um, respectful. You know, you have a lot of guys that respect us because we have a lot of time in this league. We've seen it, we've done it, and we've been in the, in the position that they've been in. So they respect us a lot and they listen. And I think that's what kind of keeps us in check with, you know, what we're doing and in the in the schemes and what we're doing in the process of, you know, trying to get better as a team. Now this loss had some extra stakes to it for the Raptors. With a Toronto loss and a Memphis win, the Raptors fall to sixth best lottery odds, which means, ladies and gentlemen, if things stay as is, the Raptors Raptors would have a good chance of retaining the pick they sent out to the Spurs in exchange for Jakob Pertl, at least for this draft. But that doesn't spin this in a any type of positive way, and it doesn't take away the nasty taste in your mouth after this loss. The Raptors look disjointed, they look like they were sleepwalking, and for the last few games have looked like they desperately need some size on the interior. Maybe the player that's missing Jakob Pertl the most is quickly and that relationship 
is what we're tapping into in the film room. It's funny that the Raptors were playing the Memphis Grizzlies tonight because this is something, this is an area of criticism, if you will, or maybe um, a, a point that people bring up when it comes to the Grizzlies heavily when it comes to John Morant and how important Steven Adams is to his game. Steven Adams, his screening ability, the ability to seal people down low, it leads Jaw to have a lot of open space, you know, especially with his slower release on his three point shots. Those Steven Adams screens can create an ample amount of room for draw for Jaw to get his offensive game off. In the same sense, quickly kind of needs a guy like Yaka Pertle to set those solid screens so he can get downhill to be able to, you know, spot up or pull up behind him. And I think we're starting to notice that. It's been a couple of games now where quickly just isn't able to get off not contested shots. I'm going to dive into this and then we'll kind of talk about it afterwards. So let's rewind to the last Grizzlies game. You see here, you know, IQ, one of his first buckets in the game in the second quarter comes off of a Jakob Pertle screen. Look at how Jakob seals off Zaire Williams' hand. He can't even get a right contest on that. And IQ knocks down the three. In the Sacramento game, same thing here, off ball action. Look at how much space that screen from Jakob gives quickly. He gets downhill with it. Nice little dump off pass. And the extra thing that Jakob is incredible at finishing around the basket, which really helps IQ because it poses as a threat when he's rolling to the basket. Same here, you know, having the ability to even slip the screen. And if they are, you know, hedging or even like sending two onto the ball, then IQ can slip this pocket pass. But again, another player who can finish these types of shots. And just how important Jakob is off ball for IQ. So you see here a flex action the Raptors are running. IQ pops out, and yes, there is a delayed reaction from Jonathan Kaminga, but the screen certainly helps IQ land a wide open shot. Another great screen assist here from Jakob Pertle, you know, kind of levels Steph Curry here, and IQ is able to settle into a mid-range shot. Another great screen assist, you see him, you know, kind of give him the momentum to catch this on the go and then kind of burst to the basket. IQ misses this, but again, he creates that opening for IQ to get set downhill. So now fast forward to no Jakob Pertl, and we see, you know, IQ settling into some tough contested isolation buckets here early on in the game. Just like this is not really his game in the first place. He needs that type of screener. So see, even when there is a screener involved, God bless that young soul, but he's no Yakka Pertle when it comes to screens. And, you know, this allows them to have two pretty tightly contested mid-range jumper for IQ there. The only time, you know, IQ really got a decently open shot was because Scotty just bulldozed over his defender and IQ landed a three. And that kind of got him going, but... For the most part, you see how much the screen assists are something that help IQ immensely with his game. And it's weird because people kind of look at screen assists and be like, ah, oh, it's, a, it's a useless stat. It's useless. What do you mean screen assists? People talked about it with Rudy Gobert. Screen assists, screen assists. It is important for a young player to get off his game, you know, to have a guy to play off of, have a center to play off of. And we're seeing how important Jakob Pertl is to Emmanuel Quickly's game. It's just very clear that he needs that separation. I think his jumper is a little bit slower than I expected as well. Funny enough, ironic because, you know, his name is Emmanuel Quickly, but I think his re release might be a little bit too slow too. I was talking to some people about that. I think he needs that extra space, much like John Morant needs that extra space to get his game off. And I'm not comparing the two players. I'm not saying Emmanuel Quickly is going to be John Morant. I'm just saying that you need that type of big man. And it's very clear that for the development of a type of player like Emmanuel quickly, you want to be able to get him into positions to succeed. And the pick and roll craft is something that he's trying to develop. He's had, you know, a couple 10 assist games here. I believe he had a career high 11 assists or a season high 11 assists as well in this little span with the Raptors. Part of this is being able to connect with that rolling big man and develop chemistry with your rolling big man. That is why Jakob Pertl is still pretty important to the overall future, or at least the short-term future of the Toronto Raptors, because having a guy like that helps the development of IQ. And I could have gone into why it helps the development of RJ Barrett. You think about, you know, when RJ is barreling to the basket, right? Jakob very much so is sealing off the big man from getting a contest on the weak side. So let's say he's doing that little curl cut that he likes to do to get to his left hand. Jakob is usually there on the backside, like holding on to the big man so that he doesn't go up with a contest. 
for Scotty, I think Jakob helps immensely on the defensive end. He's being tasked to be the low man right now. That's usually Jakob's job. So having a center, ladies and gentlemen, is important. We just saw Joel Embiid score 70 points tonight. We saw Carl Anthony Towns drop 62. Having a big man in today's NBA, pretty, pretty important. So I guess that's the point of this film room to, to show that, you know, Jakob's importance first and foremost. And I hope, I, I think the, understanding from what Darko Ryakovich said today is that Jakob will be back on Friday to play against the Clippers. Maybe he won't. Maybe he'll be back when they get onto the road next week. But these next three days, right? The Raptors have a three-day break here and they deserve it because they've been on the road for so long. Maybe that gives them time to get acclimated a little bit. Maybe that gives them time to get used to it. Maybe it gives them time to reincorporate Jakob into the lineup and see what works and what doesn't. Ultimately, it shows you how important Jakob Pertl a big man is to what they need. And it's funny because it's the same night that they dropped back into sixth in the lotto standings to avoid the whole pick conundrum and whatnot. And we'll see what happens on that front. But either way, the importance of Yaka Pirtle, especially when it comes to Emmanuel quickly and the Raptors fall to 12 games under 500. The trade deadline is, is nearing. I don't think there's going to be any type of big moves from the Raptors, although maybe you consider the Bruce Brown move being a big move, but this is what the team is, and you got to enjoy some of these developmental losses uh, because this was very clearly a, a bad developmental loss. They got to chalk this up to just not being ready, not being energized, not having any you know sort of energy in the first quarter, not having any focus in the first quarter. Those turnovers were just awful, um, and it got them out to a really bad game. It's That's, that's how young teams lose. Uh, <laughs> like today, it's funny because – I think some of the expectations of the early Raptors are still on this team. And don't get me wrong, the like the Raptors from two months ago lost to the Hornets, lost to the Blazers, lost to nearly lost to the Spurs, and they lost to the Pistons. So they weren't any better in any regard. And that's why this team broke up. But now you're seeing a different iteration of this team struggle because they're a young, inexperienced team that doesn't know how to work through the kinks of things. And yeah, you're gonna have to deal with that, ladies and gentlemen. Anyways, um, Subscribe to Raptors Republic if you're tapping into this. They do great work all around. Samson's podcast, Buckets and Tea, all that stuff. They do great things here on Confederacy of Dunks. There's a lot of great podcasts here on the Raptors Republic Network, ladies and gentlemen. And do the listen to the what I don't even know what I'm saying here, but the reading. Right, they write incredible stuff too. I've done some written stuff for them. I don't know why I'm stumbling on my words here, but subscribe to Raptors Republic, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tapping in. We will see you guys in a few days. They're facing the Los Angeles Clippers. And yeah, we'll see if that one's a little bit more interesting. Take care.